What do we do to move more quickly from research and science into action? And, um, and so I thought I'd share with you just for a few minutes some of the things that we found successful in the Charlottesville area where I think we are, after many years, starting to generate real momentum and really starting to move the ball forward. So uh, in Charlottesville, we started about eight years ago with a grant from Smart Beginnings. Um, the United Way, which is largely synonymous or a proxy for the business community, uh, really picked up the ball here as the coordinating agency in, the, in, in, in our community in Charlottesville, Albemarle. And I was involved from the beginning, and I would say for the first five or six years, we made what was frustratingly slow progress. I think we did some good things uh, in retrospect in terms of building the foundation. Um, but what we realized two years ago is that we needed a change. We needed to step in and not only try to coordinate, but to serve as real advocates um, and to try to catalyze all of the wonderful work that was being done by the schools and the nonprofits, but do it in a way that really brought together all of our stakeholders across local government, local schools, nonprofits doing great work, and our local philanthropic community. And so the, the thing that we did two years ago is we organized an early childhood task force, some of the members of that are here today, composed of all of those leaders and stakeholders. And the first thing we thought we needed to do was educate ourselves better about what was going on. And in the last two years, and really in the last eight years, we've learned a lot. Among those things we've learned is quality matters. The research suggests it, but we've learned that. Um, and quality is frankly all over the map across these programs. Um, a lot of the programs are doing the best that they can, but what we know is that skilled teachers, especially in early education, make all the difference. The second thing we've learned uh, is that um, with the ECF help and with a grant from them, we did a significant demographic and funding study across our community. Um, and what we learned uh, is that, first of all, our local government in Charlottesville, Albemarle is quite generous when it comes to funding programs for at-risk kids in our community. But we did a thorough mapping of everything that's going on. And what we were able to do is figure out, we were, we were able to identify the gap. And I think that was so important for us. Rather than talk theoretically about what it needed to happen, we could actually identify the gap. And what we found is that there are about 600 at-risk four-year-olds in our community. About 400 of them had a slot in a high-quality pre-K program. And about 200 kids didn't. And so we established our goal in the short term to reduce that gap as far as we could, to make sure that every kid who wanted a slot and whose parents wanted a slot could have one. Um, and I'm proud to say that in the first year we set an aggressive goal and we've filled 70, we've solved that problem for 70 kids, 70 out of 210, and so we're a third of the way there already. We also determined that we're reaching a very small number of at-risk three-year-olds, and we figured out that about in our home visiting programs, which are wonderful programs starting the, uh, targeting the earliest new parents and kids who are at risk, that we're filling about 50% of that need. Um, and so with that, with that demographic study, with that funding study, and with a much more clear understanding of the problem that we are out to solve, we've been able to see some significant momentum in the last year. 